Hello, I'm Steve Monkey Mason and welcome back. Now today I have a special guest. Well, special guest, just part of my life actually, but I haven't seen her for a while. It's the one and only Brit Bo on the other line. Hello, Brit Bo. Hi. Hi. Now, Brit has appeared on podcasts before, but this is the first time we're doing like the branching out kind of one. We're going to do Blackbeard's Ghost that I've got a lot of fond memories for. Um, I have Disney Plus, although Brittany signed into it. Um, Brittany discovered Blackbeard's Ghost for the first time. I'm about to uh, count it down from f three, two, one, play. Now, I'm watching it on DVD. Um, oh, oh, I'm getting the I'm getting the Disney big DVD sparkles. Well, I don't know what you've got. You might have to press pause here. Disney DVD, pure digital magic. And fucking Tinkerbell's just pissed off. I might be disturbed. I've got, I've got the, the, the main story in yellow writing over the screen. <laughs> well, pause it because I've now got the DVD warning. So I'm watching it on DVD. Brittany's watching it on Disney+. Plus. Um, as I say, it's, it's one of those things. And... Oh, there we go. Distributed by Benavista. Ready? There we go. Yellow. Right, I've got three. the. I've got the yellow writing. Okay, so you're doing a three, two, one again then. No, no, it's playing now. You'll have to catch up. Oh. God, she had one job when she started this podcast. <laughs> you you can digitally pull along with your fingers. We get the backstory. Blackbeard was Blackbeard was killed in the sea, the battle off the American shore. This was followed by a wind spread joy when it became known. The dread pirate had gone at last. Are you are you close to where I am? I've got Walt Disney Presents now. Or had he? I'm literally or had he. Right, I'm gonna have to press pause here. Right. Let me know when it says or had he. Okay. We're getting there. Uh, These South Shield girls, man. They're not they're pretty, <laughs> but they're pretty stupid. Or had he, right. Or had he. I've got that. Ready? Yes. Play. Right, so Walt Disney Presents. Yay! Old school font, that like Blackbeard's Ghost. I know, I love the music as well. Now I haven't seen your review yet, but I know you've bought the soundtrack and stuff to it. Starring Peter Ushninoff, what's a word that is? Ushninoff. Dean Jones as well. The beach shows. I uh, it's mental how Disney films used to just start. They used to get it out of the way, and when the end, they just end. There's no epic scrolling or anything like that. It's just the end, and that's it. Goodbye. <laughs> Always in fancy writing. Ned Glass, what a name! I mean, look at all the cast here. Elsa uh, Manchester. Before's amazing in this. Director of photography, Edward. But yeah, so I first seen this taped off the television. My granddaughter said, Watch this, and I have a lot of fond memories of watching it. Obviously, used to have adverts and stuff like that. Um, and it's just one of those things I think is timeless for me. Um, and even watching it now, and I've seen it a few years ago. Um, it's just masterfully done and absolutely hilarious. Oh, there was plenty of scenes that I had to rewind to watch again because they were that funny. Like, old dogs level funny. <laughs> oh, it's only you as well. Um, I would say it's just done really well. Um, I also remember Coming to America was another film my granddaughter had taped. I always used to watch it and then I bought it on DVD. And he was just, what the hell you done to this? And obviously the version he had was like, fuck this, fuck that, was all cut out of it. And obviously on the uh -huh. DVD, it was all abusively cut. Now, look at that as a Matt Payton. Do you know what I mean? Oh, and the handsome Dean Jones, look at him. Godolphin, three miles. <laughs> Genuinely thought that was Frank Sinatra when I watched this. Wow, he better go to Specsavers when the shops reopen. But even this, all this is all like classic sets and stuff like that. This kid's really funny. He's the strong man. He's so funny. It's like little Andy Bates, that man. <laughs> Actually is. 
God, you never get that over here. Do you want us to check the oil for you? Watch the windows? I mean, even like getting somebody to fucking pour the petrol for you. You just get attitude at the counter when you pay. Ah, uh, how dare you disturb me. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's the strong man, isn't he? Yeah, because he's on the track team, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mechanic on duty. <laughs> See, Dean Jones is mainly famous for being in the Herbie films, but also plays the villainous bad guy in Beethoven. Oh, yeah, because um, I remember you saying that, and then I just wanted to watch Beethoven after this. <laughs> I mean, here you go, he's a bit of blue screen. And even that, painted. Gotta love a good one. Oh, like that. The thing is, he, he, he looks like a Disney kind of character, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I know um, it's going to come up in a minute, but I was like totally awestruck by this uh, this building, the exterior of this building coming up. Ah, the old school poor man's process. Well, that's a matte painting, that. It's a painting. It just blows my mind, like, back in the day, like, they could still create stuff like this. Yeah. Look at the building! It's a painting. I know, but it still looks <laughs> amazing. <laughs> oh, that was so <laughs> sped up. Isn't he called, what's his name again? So, uh, it's Quincy, no, it's Quincy. What, are we on about the bad guy? Aye. Seymour. Aye. He totally what looks like Dean Jones, though. One of the only ones out of this that are still alive, actually. <laughs> the old ladies. Are you ahead of me? Because the old ladies have just appeared. No, the old ladies aren't in mine yet. Oh, they're here now. <laughs> I don't think i behind you. Well, I just walking through there, got lady in blue dress there, homemade cakes. That painting of Blackbeard would make great for a front cover of a steelbook or a back of a steelbook. Oh, just a steelbook in general would be amazing. Unfortunately, now because of Disney Plus and all that, I don't think um, films like this may even see the light of day on Blu ray. Is it even available on DVD? Yeah, yeah, I'm watching it on DVD. Oh, right, yeah, of course. What a fuck on that was defined. So the other night we talked about this, and then I was like, right, it's going to be in the corner. And like, I had a look around the vinyl player. I took right into the corner, right in the back. And I was like, shit, have I left it down that ex's house? Is she giving it away to a fucking charity? And then I remember there's a couple of them behind the television, and it's one of them holding up the King Kong shelf. So I was like, get in, it's there. <laughs> oh, this... You hate this guy at first, but then by the end of it, I was absolutely creased at him. I uh, even a bit like Walter Skinner and uh, the X Files, that uh, just the kind of similar character, glasses, bald head kind of look, authority speaking. Oh god, I got the soundtrack. I love the music. Alright, uh, definitely a nice little. Uh, I mean, I would have been absolutely loving if I found that in a charity shop. You know what I mean? I'm sure we'll find another copy. <laughs> Pirate theme. But even that'll be a big set. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't look at the TV. Um, I just looked to see what else people had been in, but I didn't really recognise anything apart from Beethoven and obviously Robin Hood. Yeah. Well, loose enough went on to being a lot of the... Um, Death on the Nile and stuff, uh, but mostly known to be the voice of uh, the king in Robin Hood. My granddad knew exactly who I was on about when I mentioned Peter. It was big, you know what I mean? Like, now that you know of him, you'll see him on a lot of things. Um, play against the fortune teller. Grace, my palm was silver. <laughs> I think to me though, when he goes in here and has this little two-bar with this woman, like with whole like fortune teller, 
when you watch Bottom, when Richie and Eddie go and they say, Grace, my palm was ever. Look, you stupid cow. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fortune teller woman. She's class. I'm sure that's Elsa Lanchester. Ah, you are behind us. I'm inside the tent now. She's throwing bones everywhere. Oh. You had one job, Brittany. I'm doing all the technical stuff at this end. I'm not far behind you. <laughs> Reading the book. Do you get many of them uh, fortune tellers at South Shields? No. Well, you live on the seafront, I mean. I've never actually seen one at the seafront. The only place I've ever seen one is in the big market in Newcastle. There was a, um, one of them on the road back from work just before Christmas. Like a little old uh, stagecoach. Uh, get your fortunes told and it uh, kept on moving every other day you would see it in a different place obviously it just moves oh. up and down the country I definitely didn't see that <laughs> doesn't she fucking scream at him here yeah I could be sitting there honorarium I just love the fact she keeps calling him Ishmael On a man. Definitely got psycho eyes. She, I think she nails her performance here. <laughs> Good, you couldn't get away with that now at a carnival. Kiss for a pound. All the disease going around. Oh, she's so beautiful. Look at his face when he spots her, he's like, oh! <laughs> it's got very uh, Jim Carrey mannerisms. Who, Dean Jones? Yeah. Just sometimes on his delivery of stuff, the $5 special. You know what it is? He reminds me of, um, he reminds me a little bit of Sandy Cohen of the OC that I've just watched as well. <laughs> Uh, it's, I'm glad that that epic's over. Why? Why? Because that's all you've been going on about. I mean, the good news was when Emmerdale was cancelled that you were going to shut up about Emmerdale. Now it's the OC and it's been that way for ages. <laughs> I finished it uh, two nights ago. Isn't that the one you got in the charity shop for ridiculously cheap? Where, where we're in seals or something? Yeah, I got the whole box up for £10. <laughs> Didn't you get it cheaper because you dropped it getting it out the window? Or was it eight pounds? Got it for eight quid, the entire blue eye. It was cheap as fuck. And it came with a like a perspex like case, and it has it's got a photo book and everything. So, there's a funny story here. I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen Britney's review yet. It will be done after this, but um, the bedpan incident. Um, obviously, I've known this film for the better part of my life. Um, and when me and Brittany went to Scotland, it was so cold that night. My mum has a house in Scotland, and she actually has an old bedpan. And we filled it up, didn't we, and put it in the bed. Yeah. And I was off filming someone else, and I nearly sat on the bedpan. I actually burned my arse on this bedpan. Um, but I nearly ho did the whole Blackbeard's ghost. So hopefully um, that you'll see that in the review, because it's a bit disastrous. <laughs> I just remember being in the living room and thinking, what the hell is he up to now? See, I wish we had more stuff like this over here. Auctions. Oh, this whole auction scene is absolutely hilarious. Like, we, like, I mean, I don't get down down south. I mean, they do stuff like the big like auctions and stuff like that, but nothing like this, you know what I mean? There's an auction house about 10 minutes drive from mine, but... It's set on fire, so I don't know if it reopened or not. <laughs> You've got to remember when you listen to this podcast, Brittany lives in South Shields, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the guys go around, keep one bet on that, it's a knockoff. <laughs> it's the it's the mallet, isn't it? The mallet, the mallet. That was one of them that I had to wear. Rewind as well. Sold! <laughs> Be 
Oh, it's got so such... Than like. Yeah, he has. It's such a loud bang that. So it says, Tom, it's a fake. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mr. Seymour, he's called. There's uh, the. He's one, of, he's one of the only ones that's still alive. There's the bedpan. I've seen a video on YouTube today and it's about the, uh, was it the top 70 celebrities that had died um, in the last 20 years and like there's some people on there that didn't die. Um, oh sorry, it's funny enough, the podcast I'm rendering is the Loch Ness Terror and there's a guy called Don S. Davis, I think. And um, I see shit, he's been dead nearly 10 years and I'm, like I said, I didn't even know doing the podcast but uh Guess he was last on this. It was like 70 people. Guess he was last. Oh, who? Corey Ham. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't bring Corey Ham into this. <laughs> so, now there's the bedpan. Um, sorry, I'm sitting on the end. Right, Brit, I've talked about this in a lot of podcasts, really. This chair is less than a year old I'm sitting on, isn't it? Yeah. And it makes. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, it's got so much creaking going on. I swore after my Mortal Kombat podcast I would never certainly do a podcast, but because I've got a million other things going on in the room, I've got nowhere for the chair to go to put the other chair up. Yes, me sat comfy on the bed. <laughs> he just nails it, Seymour. Like, he's like slime. <laughs> slime. <laughs> Dean Jones has been such a cool cat, man. It's her reaction to the mallet. I definitely had to rewind that as well. But see, the the lassie who's playing the love interest, she doesn't. She's not that young in the film, is she? Nah, she's. Now, when you look at her, um, like of course she def she's not young, definitely not. I mean, how old would you say Dean Jones is in this? Oh, I'd, I'd probably say like forties. Yeah, because now it would be, um, it would be obviously just if the, I mean to be honest with you, I think this film would be great if it was remade. Um, I mean, I mean the film's timeless and it's a masterpiece how it was done, but the idea, um, it it's brilliant. Um, but again, it depends who you would cast and stuff, but. Um, would you have him and her younger or around the same age? I'm saying, like, I was trying to yeah, say there that if it was redone now, you would talk and I would say between the 25 to 30 bracket, how they would cast it. It's similar to Lady and the Tramp live action um, because the. Well, actually, no, that one. You yeah, know, that's about the same year. So in the live action, the mum and dad are actually younger than what they came across in the original animated one. Hmm. I mean, Peter Ushinov's performance would be pretty hard to top, like. Yeah, that would be interesting to see if they would choose to play him. I don't even think of anybody that I would choose, to be honest. Uh, the whole jock mentality, the love interest. She's already got a boyfriend, new boy in town. Definitely about the 40s age, but these two. Gonna put you in his room, who he <laughs> he <laughs> Right, you know the painting you don't like? Oh the creepy one, yeah. That's the DVD menu screen. <laughs> no, is it? I'll um I'll take a picture of it and I'll put it in your uh, your review. Oh my god. No that you know what she looks like the, the bride of Corpse Bride. Imagine if they made that the steelbook cover. Uh, the thing is, though, I like when I'm watching it on this television, it's very narrow. You know, it's it's been brought out on DVD, but it's a very, very narrow picture. You know, it looks nice. Uh huh. 
front cover on the DVD is a bit disappointing, mine, but. I don't know if this on. I don't know if this on Disney Plus is past as HD. I think it is. I think. Well, it is. Yeah, though. Oh, it is. I mean, a lot of the quad posters we look for were double bill posters. It was Blackbeard's Ghost was someone else. Yeah, I've seen a couple of posters. She's a witch. Tiny, the bed looks in the room. <laughs> <laughs> She's fucking giving that big speech. Honestly. It's really creepy like. It does look like a girl I know, but I don't want to name check her on the podcast. <laughs> I don't no, I don't know. Um she's married to one of my friends as bros. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> oh okay, it wasn't who I thought it was. <laughs> Alright, this is where he sits on the bedpan. <laughs> I mean he did just look at it and it's gone. A <laughs> hundred bucks. Oh two hundred bucks. 200 yeah but again though like the film had started off it's you know he's coming to town it's it's set up the him it's set up the girl it's set up the love interest you've met a few characters and then he accidentally sits on a bedpan there there it is and this is where the film starts to roll oh yeah i mean great introduction to everybody before um obviously peter turns up it sets the scene quite nicely, I think. Cree, crew, Verga, Gebra, Calco, Cree. <laughs> I really wanted to memorise that for my review, but I couldn't, so I didn't. <laughs> v, crew, Virgo, Gabba, Calco, Cree. <laughs> And then the flashing on her face. It's fucking horrible, Peyton. That almost didn't look like Dean Jones from the back because his hair's been fucking skew whiffed. <laughs> and there he is. I love the red smoke. Well, it's a, ne it's a negative red dye, sort of like uh, an overlay. Yeah. Chicken liver peep skeek. <laughs> the art of technology, I am no longer behind you, Puddin. Have you clipped forward, have you? I have. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. <laughs> See, I'm watching on a PlayStation and it's the most night nightmare. Like, for stop start, depending on what kind of, like, who made the DVD. If it's Sony, it's one button. If it's everything else, it's another. But like because of the fire triggers on the back when you go to put it down, you'd be watching the film, it'd be dead fast, you'd be like, oh for fuck's sake man. <laughs> Could they not make the skip buttons the top triggers? Do you not think um do you not think he actually looks like you know when someone voices a character and they physically resemble them? I just I just keep thinking he resembles the king of Robin Hood. Oh my god, this bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he could have done more voices for Disney. Ah, I never looked into that actually. Ten out of ten for costume effort, mind. I mean, back then when they made this, it was all like we had no CGI. I mean, we had effects coming through camera effects, but like you got what you put in front of a camera is what you got. You know, money's worth and costume design set designs that tension of detail it was like there was no guerrilla kind of film and it was 
done for, especially if you're Disney you know Disney I mean although this is part of Disney's back catalogue like we've lost a dinosaur and other way through movies they've done um, I think di like a lot of them now don't get classed as like we watched Old Dogs and Old Dogs is a fucking brilliantly funny movie and it's a Disney oh, yeah. movie but you wouldn't class that as a Disney movie no, you don't see it racked with Disney you don't see it in the Disney sections do you know what I mean well, I'd never heard of it until we watched it. But that's it. I mean, the sort of like in the nineties, I would say Disney suffered. Like my 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 favorite Martian, um, as funny as that movie is, it's a bit of a flop, you know. And the Chris, you got Christopher Lloyd and Jeff Daniels, um, who were massive. At the, the 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 peak because Jeff Daniels at that era was peaking because he had just been in Dumb and Dumber, and. <laughs> Other Disney movies that they made, like Rocket Man and stuff like that, um, not the Elton John one, the other original Rocket Man, and they just seem to like get a um, a very quick bleak VHS release and then done dusted. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the fifties and sixties were huge for Disney. I mean, like remember when I watched Lady and the Tramp the other week and we didn't realise it was nineteen fifty five. Hmm. Lady and the Tramp just sounds old for Disney, though. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like the Disney Channel movies are like the Disney Channel. I want nothing to do with you. Even though I hate that painting on the wall, I feel like we need we need it because <laughs> we've got the one off Ghostbusters too. So why don't we have that one as well? <laughs> I mean, that shop can get any image, like so. That's very true. You could paint that, man. Oh, don't. <laughs> oh if I painted, it, it'd probably be even more terrifying. Uh, so he's getting the grips of what's going on. <coughs> Your bed. I'd love, to, I'd love to see an interview of the two of them. My bed. <laughs> see, at the time I seen this as well, he reminded me of Brian Blassett, but a more funnier one. Just, yeah, really. just because of the size and the beard, I think. Definitely the beard. He's just such a menace, isn't he? tiny see I don't like I'm not I don't know if I'm a big fan of a bottomed like a four poster bed what was like the full on frame well that's that's one of them yeah I've never been a massive fan of yours <laughs> Getting up there in the middle of the bed. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, you know who they would probably cast. Who? You know, well, who oh, who would they cast as the pirate now? If they cast someone younger for him, in say, for example, they made this in five years, who would it be? Oh, don't say Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Oh no, no, no. Johnny me. Depp had to get a bit. Johnny Depp must have borrowed a few bits from this guy. Well, he mainly. Well, this is what I heard. He mainly borrowed um, mannerisms and behaviour from Keith Richards off the Rolling Stones. Um, because when he became Jack Sparrow, Keith Richards loved it. And then Keith Richards ended up being in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. I don't know about this movie, but it'd be interesting to um, look that up, actually. So, 
we get the uh so yeah he's in the back of the car dog rum and this is where we encounter the police isn't it oh he's coming up yeah <laughs> <laughs> Just driving on the blue screen. Hello. What manner of aircraft is this we're cruising in? The whole driving scenes always remind us of um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit for some reason. It's a while before we get any comedy, but I mean, it, it is in a sense a little bit of a slow burn of the second part here from when he first turns up. I think the comedy mainly kicks in, oh, maybe, it's, well, your main bits of comedy is the track team scenes, right? Yeah, well, this bit coming up as well when he gets pulled over. Oh, yeah. Oh, does he, he doesn't get pulled over here, does he? God, I only watched this last week as well. <laughs> I know the policeman ends up at the top of a lamppost. <laughs> Here we go. <gone. laughs> it's all sped up and that. It's weird. Eh? <laughs> like, kind of, uh, man overboard. Fucking wreaking havoc. <laughs> I love how excited he gets at the, the idea of a car. <laughs> Fucking wrecking the place he is. <laughs> it's like my driving. You have drove like that a few times. <laughs> what up in them hills that time on the way back from Scotland? <laughs> yep, the copper. So sped up, but it works. The copper actually looks like the warden. Oh, it's just the fact it ends up at the top of the lamppost. <laughs> Man overboard, he's down. God, I hate this chair. <laughs> so I've got to have the comfy bed. Yep, and this word disappears at his hand. Obviously, just acted on his own without anyone there. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You've had your fun. I think that's I shall him. Steals his bike. <laughs> oh, the pen goes. I mean, would you not question it if a pen went off and just snapped in front of your face? Oh, <laughs> it's just the wind. <laughs> now the gun. I mean, how could you arrest somebody if that happened? Hello. 
I mean, that's a Beretta. I mean, that's definitely going to have more than five bullets in it. Six. <laughs> on the car, man. And the motorman. Yeah, chasing them. <laughs> Comes back from... It's <laughs> just how many times they go around in circles. What? <laughs> I don't know how the cop would dare arrest them. I know that's the that's the best thing. <sighs> Even in an interview, where were you when the bike was crashed in your car? Follows him to prison as well. I mean, it must be hard doing acting scenes where someone is meant to be there, but they're not, kind of thing. If that makes sense. I suppose now, though, it's a more common thing because everyone does CGI. Oh, we'll put it in with CGI. What, the enormous dinosaur was chasing it? Yeah, we'll put it in with CGI. It's a different kind of reacting, do you know what I mean? I think, like, actors getting into it and, you know, I mean, the story of the actor, fuck, I can't remember his name, Fletcher, I think he's called Fletcher, uh, Charles Fletcher, I think he's called, who plays the voice of Roger Rabbit. I mean, I don't know if something's actually wrong with him, but he used to come to set dressed as Roger Rabbit and do the vo uh, voice off screen for Bob Hoskins to react to. Oh my god, really? But then you think about him, he, he sort of just, he is a quite a quirky person anyway, but like when you see him dressed as a life size bunny, it's just a little, just somewhat just not right there, if you know what I mean. I might have to Google him as that one. <laughs> special guest? I don't think so, why? Because my phone says pudding and call. No, we don't have a guest. Okay. <laughs> Setting up the story. I spent it. Now I was going to see if Carl was going to answer. Oh, I was quite confused there. I was like, oh, it's a triple podcast. Mm. Oh, so again, you know, we've had two scenes. We've had the scene in the car, but Aunt Nick's and it slows down a bit here. Especially Disney films like this, and normally, because even though they're catered to the old audience, it would have been aimed for kids. Mm -hmm. And the kids wouldn't have really known what they were talking about, like understood kind of thing. Oh yeah, they just want to see pirates and stuff. Yeah. 
You can kind of see him being the fucking lion in the Wizard of Oz. Oh, oh, you can actually. I remember when um, I was convinced that Shadrach Dingle and Emma Deal played the lion in Wizard of Oz, but then when I worked out the age difference, I thought, well, he would have to be like over a hundred. <laughs> because the king cries um, in one scene and I just keep picturing that scene. He's a phony. <laughs> I dare some move on this chair because every time I do it's like... Ah, it's on the cards. Do we do 40? Get this floor hoovered. <laughs> Check out his pants. Mr. Walker. Everyone's got such a distinct voice. Well, it's that era as well. Um, very broad voices, isn't it? Yeah. Makes me think of like the Rat Pack. Like obviously, uh, Frank Sinatra and all that. Sixty-three years. Is that how long it's been? What? The movie. No, you're fucking not oh. terrible at maths, aren't you? He just said yeah. there's sixty-three years. Right, I thought you meant how long since the film's been out. <laughs> God, it must be nearly 50 years, is it? Um, what did I say, 60 years? 52 years. I mean, that's insane. <laughs> Fucking Harry Potter there with a the gun. Yeah, no. The whole track team scenes are unbelievable. So funny, man. <laughs> oh, it's got a beep beep. What's that about? Didn't answer on my screen there. Oh shit, was it still ringing him? Yeah. It, 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 it was ringing him and then it said call not gone through or something. Again, though, it goes from a little bit of comedy back to them two again, laying the plot. Yeah. I just love the, the vision of a pirate in, in, a, in a sports field with the bleachers behind him and that. Hi. Like he should be the, the school's mascot, shouldn't he? <laughs> this was scripted and how much of it you just did just out of nowhere I think when it'll be in a Disney it'll be a very tuned script I think I mean the film's obviously 
been built around these two, Dean Jones at the time. Obviously, Disney went on to work from quite a bit. Rushdenoff, I think, you know, when being in Robin Hood, um, I mean, I, I, I mean, I haven't got access to the computer at the moment, but like, I wonder how f close Robin Hood was to this. Well, the Disney movie. Mm -hmm. Be that. Because at the end of the day, the way they probably would have done it is either they've worked with him again, or the fact that he's recorded his voice while he's been doing this. Well, Robin Hood was five years later. Well, definitely didn't record it when he was doing this. <laughs> but obviously they've done this, then obviously they went, oh, who should be the king? And then obviously went, Ustinov. <laughs> I love his pants. I know. It looked like all the costumes, like even like Seymour's, the Seymour, Seymour, yeah, Seymour and his guys' costumes, like can't fault. See, I don't understand why they couldn't have put that scene into the last scene, being able to see the track team from there. Yeah. Good dolphin. Isn't it? So we're about 50 minutes into this. This is the first eight. Now this is, I mean, there's some great um, camera tricks here. Just blow my mind how long it was since it got made. And how things have changed now. He oh, definitely, he definitely is slaying. Ah, oh, he's definitely slimy, slimy Seymour. They should call him. <laughs> and then the bottle goes flying. Back gambling room. See the thing is, why he can't just go through like through walls and stuff. I wasn't being a ghost. I just love how the how it keeps going back to the guy behind the bar. Like he, I think he turns up in the movie like three separate times. Just to look at a little small detail there though, if you look at the tablecloth they've actually got on the table, it's got Silky's place, you know what I mean? And it's probably you probably don't even realise it's there, but just that extra like we've well, been a Disney movie and how well they've built the sets, do you know what I mean? Only you would spot that. <laughs> so, I didn't spot that. There's about pretty three different fish tanks on the go as well. <laughs> Makes you wonder if they got the idea for the, the characters in Nemo from the fish tanks in this, doesn't it? No, man, just all that cash around. You've done that before. I don't know why you did that. Was it in Auckland in New Zealand? What's that? When all of a sudden you just had all this money, I was like, just put it away, man. Oh, oh that was in a... Um... That was in Hamner Springs. Uh, where were we? We were in the 
Oh, the, um, the cool. oh, that was it, and he just pulled out all his fucking cash and he fucking put it away. You went, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was just down the road from the hotel as well. That'll reopen that, man. Let's not be called the Heritage. I hope so. I think they should rename it the Overlook, though. So, in a theory, she's gone out a date with him while she's dating that other guy, or is she just... She's just, she just picky. <laughs> I can smell him. I again we're trying to put an edge on here, it's kinda like I would definitely say maybe it's early forties. But I think it's I think it's the the costumes and the fashion back then as well, it was more I mean I don't know. Like, fashion's changed a lot since then, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, he goes flying. This is a great stunt. There you go, Silky's Place, written on the menus. Special dressing. <laughs> so he's got a plan. Oh, he squeezes the fingers. Again, though, it's just like, is he real or isn't he real? Like, can he not go through objects and stuff like that? <laughs> Actually, I didn't even think of that. I mean, you even acknowledge it or you don't. So this is a great stunt by, but then obviously paid off with the two, all like boob-like effects, like. So sped up. There's quite a few parts quite sped up, isn't there? Sign of the times. It's like when I watched Rear Window the other day. But see, surely they should see the money floating in the room. There's your bit with the door. <laughs> <laughs> I love the bit with the door. I literally like, I literally rewound that about four times. I wouldn't have a clue what to do in a betting place. I forgot how great this whole scene was, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, the old guy looks like the guy from Batteries Not Included. Behind there, taking the bet. <laughs> Jacket man, come on. Imagine if you had a betting shot like that now. You still do, it's just you've got to know where they are, I think. Yeah. You know what it is? I would probably have Johnny Depp playing Seymour. Well, 
I mean, Johnny Depp sort of burnt his presidents with Disney and Lonnie. I mean, if he's going to play a fucking Waddy Waddy. Try, I watched Lone Range the other night and I gave up when he plays a sidekick. I've never seen that. I didn't fancy it when I seen the trailer. But no, I definitely, I could definitely picture Johnny Depp as Seymour. Tell you who Seymour looks like in this, Gomez Adams. Adams, yeah. She's moving quite quick. Ew, I like <laughs> you. Are you trying Carl again, are you? Aye. Yeah. Has he seen this? I don't know. Oh. We get called to play um, Blackbeard. <laughs> wow, I hope he hasn't heard that. <laughs> so 55 minutes in the movie, just have about 40 minutes left. Now here comes the second fall. And then, there you go, he's got the tits on his head. Ooh, just need to knock me a cup of coffee over. Oh no! And then the rum goes with him. But see, I mean, you can just see the black wire there, but... You've got to really scrutinise it, haven't you? The best part's when they come back to the restaurant later in the movie, and he just hides everything behind the bar, as if to say, fuck this. <laughs> ah, this guy delivers quite a good performance, the uh, commentator. Oh, definitely. He was brilliant. This whole next the fifteen minutes, I would say, like I was absolutely fuddled. Well, that's it. You know, it's built up. Then it has almost like that next act. So there's been a lot of groundwork and a lot of establishment. You know what I mean? But again, though, it's one of the things Disney used to do with this. This could have been a musical. Do you know what I mean? Because they were they do stuff like that. But oh, they could probably make it, make like a stage show musical out of it as well. When you think about it. Dolphin. Let get oh. them. Oh, look at that. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi, I'm on that. Hi. I'm fine. Uh, I'm fighting my way through the general public. I went to the shop and it's been a nightmare. <laughs> oh my god. Are you still with the general public? Uh, no, no, I'm going to be in my house in like two minutes. Right, so we have so, Carl. Is Carl has joined the podcast. <laughs> have you even seen uh, this movie? Have you even seen this movie? Well, it must be a few years because there's no fucking kid in it. That's what I was doing. It's an arch. Well, you get like a young boy. I think there's something different there. Fucking hell. It's not there. Uh, Pete's dragging you now. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> nah, no, oh, I'm not surprised what that is now. Honestly, there's a pirate film. I'm sure Disney. And it was like a young lad, probably like seven year old. And he was on his way with a bunch of pirates. No, this is not the pa this is not the movie we were thinking you were watching. 
Right. So, give me a, give me a rundown. What's happened so far? Brett, give me a rundown. Oh my God, really? So it's from 1968, Carl, and um, so Dean Jones has arrived at Godolphin, which is a town, to be in charge of the track team. And the ghost of Blackbeard's turned up, and he's basically just a massive nuisance. Um, he helps him to like track the team to win, and yeah, it's amazing. Right. No one, no one can see him but him. So the ghost of Blackbeard. So I'm the one I'm thinking. Ah, uh, like see, the one I'm thinking of was very much alive. <laughs> oh well, this one's definitely dead because nobody can see him apart. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, right, so is it a favourite of both of yours or? It's one of my childhood favourites. Is it one of yours, right? I only watched it for the first time last week. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. What's your verdict? I then found the soundtrack on eBay for one ninety nine on vinyl, so I'll have that. <laughs> well, you're winning there already. Nah, it's a really well made movie, it's really funny, um, it looks great, and it's something that people should rediscover where we've been on Disney Plus. I think Carl should watch it on Disney Plus and give us his verdict out of that. I think we've lost Carl, I think, I think Carl's been stolen by a pirate. Am I still here? Ah, uh, you are. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> Watch it on Disney Plus and give us your Right, well, I'm in the house now and Disney Plus is on, so give me a second. Oh. Well, I tell you what, uh, Carl, if you can. I tell you what, Britt, as well, if Carl mm -hmm. watches this after we finish this podcast and then Carl yeah. films a review, sends me it on WhatsApp, I can put it in your review at the end. Yeah, then it'll be like a double room. Yeah. All from separate holes, how good are we? And then I can fill in the gap between it with a bedpan. Yeah. <laughs> Sound good. Yes. Are you there? I'm going to say the reception is not that great, but I'm just wondering if it's going to settle. I thought it sounds alright at this end of my end coming through, so. Yeah, it sounds alright all the way from South Shields as well. So. <laughs> So this is something we've been wanting to try for a while. It's a, uh, again with the whole lockdown, doing a triple podcast through WhatsApp, um, and as I say, me and Carl trying to get Paul Ray out of his hiding hole. But you know, so we've got the track started. This is where it gets really funny. He is brilliant, the commentator. Doesn't he chuck himself right, with so it? The, the track game, we are, I can tell you exactly how far we're in, Carl, actually. We're uh, one minute, one hour, one minute, and one minute seconds. <laughs> well, I've just uh, kind of typed it in, and I'm thinking of Treasure Island. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> as soon as I come back here, I've got like, the, the young boy, the what looks like for the blue black beard, which I'm sure is probably not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm going to scream, black beard ghost. It's in the title, anyway. Stephen, you are wanting to the first hour though, right? And not just tune in from here. No, no, I've better say I've better say I'll probably one first play though, because I don't, you know, if, uh, it's going to be very confusing if I jump in in an hour. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, he didn't either really know much. I mean, it's just, you know, the ghost comes, and this is the fun bit of the movie, really. This is this is an amazing bit of the movie. The guy with the glasses by the end of it is just absolutely loving life. Oh, he is like. So it's it, 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 it's obviously a little bit of time lapse because obviously the picture I'm looking at, obviously the bloke who uh, I'm presuming is the only one who can see Blackbeard is living in like kind of what the like modern times. So is that right? Is he? I am. Um, well, it, I mean, Blackbeard comes back from the dead and like the modern times there, but it's like the sixties. Oh yeah, yeah, I know that, but obviously I'm looking at like Blackbeard and I'm looking at the bloke and clearly through costume they don't look like they're living in the same era. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Blackbeard is in costume the whole way through. Yes. Well, I would assume it was all in pirate era. Uh, some era. <laughs> no, it's, 
years and years of past. Ah, right. I want to know Carl's um, view on who he would cast as Seymour after he's watched it as well. Uh, we've, we've been talking about the fact that this could get remade um, if Disney is looking to... Uh, even just looking for content on Disney Plus and they've got the, the rights to this. <laughs> I love that bit where they fucking chucks down the fucking bottle and he's like, right! <laughs> <laughs> I love how he walks through and just everyone just starts flying but again it's great extra, extras and actors work has any of you seen the computer war tennis shoes what it's, it's a suggestion that I've got on the screen from Blackbeard Gold so we've got <laughs> Jamie Crockett, which I expected, Treasure Island, sure, and then we've got Shaggy Dog, um, Herbie, Parent Trap, a film called That Darn Cat, and the computer wore tennis shoes, and I'm more, con I'm more curious about the tennis shoes. I'm definitely curious about that, like, I must say. They did some weird stuff uh, at Disney at that era, there's one about a cat. I'll tell you what, who, who's in it, um, Oh, that's, is that it? I'm just acting. Sorry, I'm just looking at a uh, cast. <laughs> Maybe Kurt Russell. Ah, oh, Kurt Russell when he's a kid. Hi. I love it how they're, they're going on the movie here when they're all running the wrong way around the track. <laughs> so much happens in this whole 15 minutes. It's amazing. I mean, the guy who did the high jump before nearly landed on his fucking neck. <laughs> Godolphin scores. I mean, even that having to replace the numbers and stuff. So old school. It's the old digital now. Now, when I was a kid, this would literally go to adverts just as this would fade out. I always remember that. I've seen it that many times. <laughs> it's actually still knocking around on tape, VHS tape somewhere. Really? Yeah. Well, you got it. Taped off the television of my granddad, but I feel like one of the ones I'd seen and went, ah, that's Blackbeard's ghost, so it's somewhere. Three years younger than you, so you knew exactly what I was on about when I mentioned it. Somebody <laughs> hits the board, doesn't it? Uh, oh. you wouldn't think, I just... Oh, this would knock your teeth, this when he uh, bites in the Sakaar thing. Oh, it's not that time. It's just the constant excitement of the guy who's in charge of the school. He's just loving it. This guy here, though, like when he, he shot puts and it just falls to the floor. It's brilliant, this. See, now, I'm not being funny, like, but I think this is going to really like change my perspective on this film because you'd have really make me sound way more interesting just describing what you're saying. <laughs> Well, that's going to be really good for your review because then you've got to watch that and give us the review. So we've basically got four co uh, colleges trying their the game. So that at the moment the guy's trying to do, is it the shot put? Shot put, yeah. So there's a really big stropped guy, chucks it. And of course, no one can see the, uh, the pirate. And now he's constantly looks like the balls is bobbing all the way up. And um, he chucks it. And then the news reporter nearly gets hit here. See, that makes it brilliant, you know what I mean? You've been following the news reporter for ages, and then he gets his comeuppance. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Jones's face throughout the whole 15 minutes as well. Well, 
Maybe swing all one person who will enjoy my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> As I say, building more content, podcast. Uh, you've, you've probably only got to, like, I don't know, Carl, tomorrow to send us that review. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll make a priority. I mean, I'm invested now. Carl, have you seen the live action Lady and the Tramp yet? Um, I have not. Uh, I've not heard good things, though. No, I'm, I'm just wondering your opinion of it, because I've done a review. Uh, There's a reason why it's Disney Plus exclusive. <laughs> yeah, you know, like the, the new version of Straight DVD. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's gone straight. Yeah, it's gone straight. Yeah, it's gone straight. Yeah, it's gone Isn't Star Wars out of here? Um, I. On Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah, it got released early. It was probably out released two weeks time, but I think they made an effort for May the Fourth. But they also had the last episode of Clone Wars, uh, which was kind of really highly interested in the world of Star Wars geeks. I was devastated, so. because obviously I've seen Disney Plus when we in New Zealand, and I had loads of stuff on that I was dying to watch again. Got it in England, and England don't have it on. I was just like, well, that's a bit nasty. So yeah, I've not gotten too much into it yet, but I had had a funny feeling about that. Cause, like same thing with Netflix, you know, you can get like three different um, regions of Netflix, and you'll get different content. Yeah. I just yeah. don't, I don't get it. Like I say, like, I mean, sure, it might be have rights and stuff like that involved, but it just seems like it's really going against the grain when it comes to like the customers. I was so annoyed. I was dying to watch the Brave Little Toaster. Oh, classic. Well, it's, di- it's distribution rights, though, isn't it? I mean. Like, I mean, uh, Disney Plus, I mean, Disney Plus, um, I think they'll probably have dealings with Sky and stuff like that. That will affect it. But, like, um, Netflix, it's mental how to, some stuff's on Netflix. is not. But, like, Britt, you know this. When we were in New Zealand, the amount of stuff that is Netflix exclusive over here was out on physical media over there. That have seen loads of films. Remember that street things box set in um, our video? Oh, my God. Yeah. But it's just, it's just more the films when they get called uh, Netflix originals, but like you go over there and it's got Netflix nowhere near on the box. Yeah. So they're just cherry picking like, films that they want, and then knowing that it's not available over here, so they want to cash in and say, oh, you can, it's original, it's one of us. Yeah, well, like the foreigners over there, Jackie Chan, Pierce Brosnan movie, that was available. You can buy that, you know. Yeah. Carl, I'm so glad you know what the Brave Little Toaster is. <laughs> you still have one. That's a child, I that one. Oh, me too. I had that in VHS and I gave it to Paul Ray. I guess that's gone now. <laughs> I think I've got a DVD. Poor Paul Ray. Yeah, I think I've seen that on DVD advertised before. Yeah, I think I've got The dolphin is 25. Years old? No. No, it's, it's a score. <laughs> the film's 52 years old. I have got not like 68. And, the lead, and Peter Ustinov, who plays Blackbeard, is the voice of the king on the animated Robin Hood movie. Ah, nice. Oh, I could imagine. Yeah, he looks like it, doesn't he? Yeah. He looks like, he looks like that guy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you guys see it, but you like when animated characters are definitely like pretty much modelled after the person who's speaking after, like for them. What did I say before, Stephen? <laughs> he, ah, but the thing is that Lion isn't very. He's dead skinny. He is really skinny. Um, but you. I said after it took beard, I don't know. I think it's like kind of. I don't know. I, I don't know why I see it, but I do see it. I could definitely, um, well, Stephen was saying he could definitely imagine him playing the, the Cowardly Lion in Wizard of Oz as well. <laughs> I'm so excited for Paul's review now. <laughs> <laughs> you have to let us know what you think of Lady and the Tramp if you watch it as well. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> So, Definitely put that. Oh shit! I forgot to drop the tournament off for you today, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. But you know, I didn't want to hold it against you. Now I want to. 
I dropped you duck to sleep off. I've only had that six fucking weeks. Yeah, I'm waiting for a sequel now. <laughs> I haven't seen the tournament yet, Ian. Well, I'll be honest with you. I mean, you know, as I always did say I wanted to buy, you know, support, you know, the system. Um, and it looks like I've done. I've seen the channel. I think I need like the so I would kind of remind myself of it, but uh, it's strange because Robert Carlyle is in it as um, a priest, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Well, it was funny because when I was looking it up, he, like the first thing that popped up was a film. I don't think he is a priest, but there's a film that <laughs> Robert Carlyle is in called The Priest. And I was like, yeah, that doesn't look like the one I'm looking for, but <laughs> I realise he's done a lot of stuff. He has. I mean, we only had him for three weeks, and I think he got there two hundred and fifty grand. Aye. Uh, not bad, Peter. Not bad. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie. That's why people take roles like that for man in Europe and stuff like that. So. Well, for this. Here's a question: Do you reckon Nick Cage is out of debt now? Um. Because he's he's done it. I mean, if you consider like the last five years, he's done it. Can he turn a film by for an average actor? Well, he did buy six fucking I mean, castles. They're not all, they're not all like, proper, like, blockbusters now like that, but obviously he's probably getting paid a candy bit because he's Nicholas Cage. Well, I mean, depends how many castles he bought, really. <laughs> True. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, that's what you need in a podcast with, uh, with Nick Cage. That new one he did, Colour Out of Space, was fucking class-like. You know what it is though, I'm really like kind of surprised how they went really out for such a nice, like, nice piece of artwork, it's a nice box set and everything. And I was like, oh, it's interesting that like how, you know, you get certain big productions that just really shite basically, and then you get like something like that and it's just like really thought out and looks like you've really put a lot of effort into it. Well, it's Thomas Hodge who did the artwork for it, do designs, um, who's done a lot of yeah. stuff for Arrow, but um, it's because it's a Richard Stanley movie. Uh, and Richard Stanley obviously being this British like he was going to be the next big thing in the early 90s and then he tried to make the island of Dr. Monroe um, if you watch Lost Souls on Netflix it's a fucking amazing movie but like he sort of like he had a nightmare on that film and ended up being fired from it and sort of uh, has made little or no films ever since so this is like his big comeback performance but I mean what was it? Yeah, from what I've seen, yeah. I mean, a lot. I mean, it's got a lot of '80s vibes. It's got a lot of nods to like the thing. It's got a nice score. Um, visually, it's got some like visually stunning some of it because it's all like uh, bizarre pinks and purples and all that. But like the practical effects and just, I mean, it's H.P. Lovecraft as well. So it's got that kind of like unworldly shit going on with it. So, but now the only the only downside is you get the special box set. You get a little booklet. You get a nice little poster. But the D the Blu-ray's got no extra features whatsoever. See, that's um, that's a video that I was thinking about. We could do, you know, um, just kind of like just banter about you know physical media. Because uh, I just I keep going back to it, whether it be with you guys on the movie group or with my other friend. But uh, it's just like the whole idea of like physical media. It doesn't really like kind of help itself in some ways. I mean, if you look at some DVDs. Um, the even though nothing's changed in terms of distribution or like rights and stuff like that, but you'll get a Blu-ray version come out later on, and it hadn't even got the same special feature on. It's got less, and you yeah. think, well, hold on, a Blu-ray disc, you know, is also supposed to be like it's got to look great, it's got to look nice, but it's still a massive like disc in terms of memory, and it should be able to put on like you know um, extra features or even like um, interactive menus and stuff like that. I think it would be like massive in the DVD era, but Blu-ray seems to be like more bare bones than ever, and it costs twice as much. Well, that's it. If you look at Fair First Blood, um, First Blood has a really good commentary. One with Sylvester Stallone, then there's a one with the original author, and um, they're on the DVD, but they're not on the Blu-ray. Yep. Yeah. Well, this is it. It's just like it seems to be like, well, I don't get it. Well, why aren't people like putting stuff like that on? I mean, it, I mean, there's so much extra work. I mean, I don't know, but. And then you look at Universal, who like go for like the proper stock. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, um, sorry, sorry, so, sorry, you cut that off. But I don't know if you've seen that, Brittany. <laughs> um, 
when he gets carted off by the old women after the like the win, and the old women pick him up running across, the two guys at the back, well, they're obviously guys dressed up as old women, obviously they lift him up and run with him. But uh, I just I just got to look at one of them, I was just like, fucking hell, it's a guy dressed up. I didn't even notice that. Uh, see, now that's the sort of thing I'm going to pick up on. That bed looks smaller than it did before, Britt, doesn't it? <laughs> definitely, do, I, that would definitely be too short for you, definitely. And I would definitely push you off the edge. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's that's just got danger written all over that thing. <laughs> oh, I've heard stories, Britt. Oh God, New Zealand hashtag. Hashtag. <laughs> You can literally have every space of the bed. I'm not being funny, but when I saw what you do with your toes, mate, that's, that's enough for anyone to like suffer. So <laughs> my, my, my vote firmly goes towards Britain. So it shouldn't have as much better shall I, if that's what you're doing with your toes, right? Did you like me plan, Paul? It was actually, it was really good. I was meant to message you about it, actually, because I watched the video. I thought it was really good, and I just, like, got, like, distracted, but I thought it was really well done, because I wasn't, like, expecting that on the outtake, but oh, it was like, right. <laughs> We're talking about 10 things I hate about you. Check out that review. Brittany does a great poem. And because she drops my uh, obsession with my toes in, there was a bit of blood in that video. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you know fine well I could have put an alternative take in that. Which one? What, <laughs> when the toenail actually comes off, you just see the aftermath in the video. Oh. I know you like to record everything, but really, like, did you just think, oh, before I do this, I might get my camera? Thing is, if I don't pull my toenails out, my little ones, they grow upward, and when the, the, the toenails build up that much layer, it it, it come, becomes hard to walk. It's just the fact you don't use a plaster, I know you just put <laughs> up, and who does that? <laughs> See, I just think that's asking for trouble because surely that's going to hurt when you take the sock off later on. The sock's just going to stick to it, exactly. Yeah, of course. Two against one here, couldn't. And now, welcome to my podcast, everyone ganging up on us for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really want to know Carl's verdict on the portrait on the wall as well. The what? The scary portrait on the wall in the movie. Oh, okay, nice. See, there you go. It's the one and only time in the movie you see him reacting and you get someone else's point of view about how he's just lost his fucking mind. <laughs> get a little song going. I love this song. That'll be on the vinyl, is it, Brit? I love it how the hotel's just like it's made out of ship parts and even in the few scenes you see it, it looks great. Oh, it looks amazing, even as a painting. Um, so it says, Walt Disney presents the story of Blackbeard's ghost, narrated by Peter Ustinov, with dialogue from Peter Ustinov as Captain Blackbeard, G Dean Jones as Steve Walker, and Suzanne Pleshett as Joanne Baker, um, it does mention on here somewhere. Includes extracts from the movie soundtrack as well. So it's like it sounds like it's part narration and part soundtrack. Oh, she's she's now like, right? I'm gonna give this a go. Oh, here comes the rum man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, loves. Just covers the whole lot up, and he's like, "Nah, not again." Ah, <laughs> oh, the black eye, but then the did the dissolve between the two takes. <laughs> it's so weird that effect. 
<laughs> That's a great effect, that, though, with the footprints in the door. I know. Here we go, Slimy Seymour. Slimy Seymour. Seymour is such a good name for a dog. I'm going to add Seymour to the list of names. No. Why? You got a dog? Yeah. What can I do for you? What type? Golden Retriever. In a dream. Oh. I want it. <laughs> you someone could call them both Corey. <laughs> Two Corys. Two Corys? be amazing. Oh, I imagine that. Which one's dead? Corey. Which one? <laughs> I've lost a dog, which one? Caught you now, but which one? Like, no, do we forget? I'll listen to this podcast and comment on that. That's a big ass vault safe on the wall, like. To be honest with you, now though, the film, it's going to like fast track forward quite a bit actually because um, I mean it's got less than 20 minutes left and there's quite a big scene and a lot of stuff wrapping up. Uh, there's quite a lot happens between now and the finish, especially with Seymour and these guys here. Definitely vision Johnny Depp as Seymour. I don't know. I don't think it would. There's something about the charm of this movie, especially about the extras actors. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just don't. You just don't see it that much in the modern film without it looking cheesy. Yeah. No, I agree on that. I've just remembered the scenes coming up when they keep betting and he keeps moving it so they win. Is it on the blackjack table or something? Or the roulette? Roulette, aye. Uh... Imagine being that guy though, what are you doing tonight and you just have to sit in a room waiting for somebody to come in. Oh, hiya. <laughs> no more bets, please. No more bets. The roulette guy is amazing. I really like. Such a chance that though. I mean, how many numbers is on a roulette? What fifty? I think so. The wallpaper behind the roulette guy reminds me of the shining carpet. Well, the shining carpet's red, and that's definitely green. I mean. No. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, that bit there. Wait, when you said that, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the wallpaper. And it's fucking green. I know I'm from South Shields, but Jesus. No, we don't hold it against you, though. He does. <laughs> <laughs> but you're saying about the roulette thing is it's a weird game, though, because I remember going to Amsterdam with my friends, and I was very much dragged there. I really didn't want to go because I didn't have a lot of money. And uh, they agreed to pay it out and everything. And I literally, someone gave me 20 quid, and they all went to the casino on the boat. And I placed a bet on 14, and it came through. No. Paid for, last, paid for the last of my weekend. It was very nice day, but I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still very difficult to win, I think. But it's just interesting how people do have a system. Yeah. The roulette guy's got it, he's just got the best face. It's just the effects of all the chips moving to the, the winning number. Well, that's like, um, I think it might be stop animation when they do it, but because you're not looking at something physically moving and you're looking at a still and you're just looking for something like sliding along frame at a time, it works. 
Yeah. I mean, now they would do CGI. Well, now nah, just fucking do it the old way. Because at the end of the day, your brain knows it's actually happening. Oh, yeah. There's all patients doing it, though. That's the problem. I mean, CGI, is, even though we all know, or at least those who can appreciate it, know it's not as good as the old days, but it's just so much easier, isn't it? It's going to be, like, so much simpler to put together rather than actually having to do physical kind of prop work. I have so much love when... Um you hear of a new, a newer, more up-to-date movie being made and they've done parts of it the old school way. Um, it's like, yeah, Stephen's going to totally grief me for this. So you know when they did The Snowman and the Snow Dog? A sex pest yeah. and a sex pest is dog, huh? <laughs> <laughs> they did that the old way. They sketched the whole thing. Um, and I watched the documentary and I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad you did it the same way as back in 1986. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's kind of one of those things where it's the charm of it. You know what I mean? It's not about how uh, how flows or how like how clear it is or how like you know high how high depth it is. Uh, I think that's one of the things where most people will sort of revert and say, "Oh, you just it's the olden day ways. You just old fashioned." It's like, yeah, but the reason why we're still talking about it, you know, what twenty, thirty years later. I mean, look at this, nineteen sixty eight, and it's still like kind of a relevantly known film to most people. Oh, but, yeah. uh, a lot of stuff these days you're not going to be talking about in 20 years' time, easy. No, I mean, this film's 50, 52 years now, and we're, we're sitting now doing a podcast about it. It's just like, because it's well made, it's well crafted. I mean, Peter Ushtinov's fucking absolutely brilliant in this movie. Hello? And I don't. <laughs> Hello? Everyone just went quiet. I was just like. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think Disney would have put it on Disney Plus if they weren't proud of it. I mean, to be honest with you, Disney's not. Uh, I don't think Disney cares what they got there. But hasn't um, Carl? Hasn't Splash been edited? Yeah, um, I was reading an article about it. Uh, I mean, not like I was saying it's not dramatically, but enough for it to be enough. Um, it's just a little detail, like um, when she first comes out of the water, like in the original cut, you just have a very clear uh, overview shot of her ass. Whereas now, I think it's, like, it's just basically comes from the bottom up to the crack of her ass, and then uh, it's completely covered. Or there's a bit where she's struggling, and I think there might be like a nipple shot, uh, which they've now completely like kind of pasted out. So that's the issue that I have with uh, with Disney. So I say, if you don't think it works, don't put it on, but like, don't take something that's been loved for years and then decide now that today's generation is not going to be able to yeah. love it just as much. I mean, I don't think a, a five-year-old kid's going to sit there and go, oh, look, mum, an arse, because it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not like it is, but it's, like, it's not like viewing it the way an adult would view it, so at the end of the day, it's like, yes, it's there, but it's not going to affect anyone. It's not going to be sitting there going, oh, what do you do at uh, home at the weekend, little Timmy? Oh, I watched uh, a mermaid get her ass out on screen. You're going to say, no, I watched a, like, a really fun mermaid film. It's just like, I don't know, like, the whole idea of them messing around with it. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I can see why, but some to the south, man. I watched that like a year ago, uh, and yes, the nature of it is very harsh uh, in terms of today's like acceptance, but it isn't like horrific. It's not like the, the, they're not using like, uh, that much lingo that it would just be purely offensive. I think, you know, it's, like, it's still kind of a family esque film, it's just in its own era. Mm. That's well, it, though. Fan of, um, of the roulette guy getting le- electrocuted, the effects used on that, by the way. <laughs> well, again, that's him acting and then just, like, obviously drawing in the electrocution and just, you know, it's overacting, but it's part of the movie. It's funny. Yeah. Then by the end of it, he's like, just go, just take your bloody winnings. <laughs> I'm very oh, here comes the big fight. Get your fingers out, bang bang! (laughs) 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 Shot with his fingers, I mean, Carl's probably thinking, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, when you see the big face scene, then you see you get your fingers out, it's just like, sure. 
And now they're trying to get his fingers off him. Oh, I forgot about this whole scene. Oh my god, I only watched this last week. Every day is blending into one. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the movie, everyone's getting shot with the fingers. Don't point that over here. <laughs> so would you like to say this being remade then? Still? I love the fact he blows the end of his finger. <laughs> I think, I mean, I would... I would like to see it get remade, but I think it is it is timeless. But if Disney's looking to remake stuff, I can see them getting it done. But, it, I mean, it's a very isolated movie. If you take away the fact of the track, the big track scene, everything else is just all in sets. Yeah. Oh, the guy with the black eye. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> I mean, the guy, the main bad guy just ended up with a roulette wheel up his bum. I mean, that's a Disney movie. <laughs> the roulette wheel up his bum? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Carl's probably thinking, how is this? Is, it, is that a visual effect? No. <laughs> Interesting. The henchmen are fighting invisibility here. What is that guy's hairstyle with a black eye? <laughs> he looks like someone off something else and I really can't think what I'm thinking of. Oh. Again though, that's great wire work as well. And of course what the, the cliche Yeah, and of course the cliche of hitting the jackpot machine and the jackpot coming out and covering them in fucking pennies. Right, it's cliche to fuck now, but it's fifty years ago then this was original and funny. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's still funny now. Well, for us, not anyway. Mm. <laughs> Bert, what did you think of the Highlander? I know you only watched that for the first time in Australia, didn't you? New oh, Zealand. I was, New Zealand, sorry. My bad. <laughs> I was I was really confused because I was under the impression the movie was all set in, like, like uh, castle times, if that's like, what you're... Period, period, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, flipping him off the green mile rocks up. Um, all like, hey, pretty. Um, it was <laughs> Hello, pretty. It was very confusing for me. I was like, what is going on? I don't get it. But no. Um, I would like to take I you enjoyed. out, Deborah. And then, mm -hmm. and then obviously Phil Connery as well. <laughs> Since yeah. the dawn of time. It's just funny because I think you mentioned white work. I don't know if you uh, spotted that. I mean, uh, even on the blue, uh, it's quite clear um, at the end when uh, Crystal Lambert, like, he's supposed to be like floating in midair, and it's just like you can clearly see like about six or seven wires attached to him. I don't think I noticed that actually. Did you not? Oh wow. <laughs> well, like, I, I mean, even though I mean, me dad, I mean. I did send him the special edition of Blu-ray, which he could have played, but he decided he wanted to watch the one he taped off television. <laughs> really? Oh, I like that. I like that. Oh, yeah. Good character. Good yeah. character. Coming up. Oh, Cree, Crew, Vega, Gabba, Calico, Cree. <laughs> fucking chanting around a fucking fire. <laughs> Carl's clearly at the point of what the actual fuck am I watching now. And here he is. Brit, I don't know if you know this, like, but they've used exactly the same red overlay as they did at the start of the movie. Now, see, I thought I'd noticed that, but I just thought it was meant to be like that anyway. Look at the painted tree in the background. <laughs> it's a set, remember? She is so creepy. What, Elsa Lanchester? Uh, Psycho-wise. That portrait could clearly be a younger her. <laughs> well, yeah, this will be nearly the end, this. But again, like we talked about at the start, Brett, it's just going to come up the end and then that's it. And then that's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like all of the old school Disney movies, like your animated ones used to do that as well. Now everyone in the country... 
I'm just saying there now you, it's in your contract that you get an end credit. Yeah, well, it's a dead end, yeah. Look at them creepy eyes. <laughs> but it makes no sense why it goes off. You could have just haunted the hotel and made some money. He could have just stayed, really, when you think about it. He's not going to... Do, well, I was going to say he's not going to do any harm. Of course he would do harm. He's a nuisance. <laughs> and the curse is lifted. Lesson. A fantastic performance, so. Oh, absolutely. The pair of them on set together is absolutely amazing. Oh, who's making a beep beep? Who was that? That wasn't. That's I'm just getting a message on my phone. Ah. Uh... Probably a guy. I, I've muted the movie group. I just check in now and again. As soon as I, I seen my, it was Star Wars Day, I was like, fuck that. I put my phone on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> Did you not uh, see the conversation last night that included uh, was all about you, Stephen? About me? Aye. No? <laughs> it must be like a good five, ten minutes of just talking about uh, Stephen Mason's sex tape. Oh, I must have missed that. <laughs> it went on for a while. It was, I, I can't know what I was said now, but I think someone has said something. I think with Paul Ray turned around and said, oh, that's the name of your sex tape. And then, like, we started talking about Stephen, and then all of a sudden it blended together. Oh, it was very bizarre. Fucking okay, hell, getting grief on my own movie group. I'm getting grief on my own podcasts. Ah. Uh... And you, Paul Ray, man, I bet Paul Ray is literally going to be busting out a sex dungeon in the next year. <laughs> Fucking Fifty Shades of Ray. <laughs> so the, that's a nice little shot there, the boat going off into the smoke with the actual anchors. Well, anchors? No, fucking anchors. The... Uh, Paddles moving on their own, and we get a big yeah. ship, which, to be honest with you, it looks better than it did in the Goonies. <laughs> you cue the music. To be honest with you, that footage there, it's probably stock footage from another Disney pirate movie, to be honest with you. It's probably why it's blued down. Oh, did you think? Aye, for what the view's there, aye, definitely. And there we go. Oh, we get credits. Peter Ushtinov, Dean Jones, Susan... Silky Seymour. Should be slimy Seymour. Pine Top Purvis. <laughs> Ned Glass, the teller. Lou Nova, Leon. So we get the cast, the end. So like, not even the director gets a final farewell right now. <laughs> Yay! But nothing has like a generation of once the film was done, you just you got up and went. There was no like sitting around. There was no like kind of. Uh, I was going to say earlier on, um, is that like a lot of a lot of cowboy films did that. Um, especially in the 50s and 60s when they used to finish it was just and the weird thing is about cowboy films is that they tend to like finish in the most like kind of kind of point blank way and it was just like the end and then that was it so it's kind of one of those things that it must be a generational thing well that generation um, we were 
we were looking at um, the quad posters and this was all always you see it like double build with another movie but you've got to remember like these would be shown you wouldn't be able to sit and watch it at home on your vcr player you would have to go at the pictures and see it so the shorter the movie yeah. is if a movie's an hour and a half then you know what i mean it's like right and then you can get so many showings of the movie because obviously yeah. it would have been running off uh, reel to reel do you know what i mean so so, yeah. Well, I've been Steve Monkey Mason. This has been the podcast for Blackbeard's Ghost. Um, we started off with Britbo, then Carl turned up halfway through. Um, we're going to do a spin off episode of Review Rant Random, where Brit's going to do it and Carl's going to add in a review. I've got a cameo to make, I bet, with a bedpan from the past. But yeah, thanks for listening. Say goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Goodbye for now.